for the region and for just the entirety of humanity, what gives you hope? We just heard a lot of pessimistic, cynical takes. What gives People you hope? don't like war. That's, that's a good reason. That's hope. In other words, the fear of war, the disaster of war, should give people an uh, impetus to try and seek peace. When you look at people in Gaza, and people in the West Bank, people in Israel, they should want fundamentally, no, but fundamentally they hate war. Yes, I think so. What, what gives you hope? There is no hope, no. It's an extreme, no, I'm, hey, I'm not happy to say that. Of course you are. It's a, it's a very bleak moment right now because- That I agree with, I agree with Israel that. believes it has to restore what it calls its uh, deterrence capability. I think you've written about it actually, I re just realized. Israel has to restore its deterrence cap capability and after the catastrophe of October 7th, restoring its deterrence capacity means this part you didn't write about, the annihilation of Gaza and then moving on to the Hezbollah. No, no, no. So, so the Israelis are dead set on restoring that deterrence capability. On the Arab side, and I know Muin and I have disagreed on it, and we're allowed to disagree. Um, I think the Arab side, the lesson they learned from October 7th is Israelis aren't as strong as we thought they were. And that will be an unfortunate, and, and they, unfortunate and they, message and they, if that's really what the yeah, Arabs and they come think, to believe. And they think that there is a military option now. <laughs> and I think that that's, that's, that's it's nasty. a zero-sum game at this point, and it's very, very bleak. And I'm not going to lie about that. Now, I will admit my predictive capacities are, are not perfect, are, are limited. limited. Yes, yes. But for the moment, it's a very bleak situation. That I agree with. And I don't see right now a way out. However, at the very minimum, permanent ceasefire and the inhuman and illegal blockade of Gaza and- uh, Why is free, it illegal? The they were shooting rockets at Israel for, for 20 years. Okay, I, I, Why is that illegal I, I to blockade I, Gaza? He thinks why, they're bottle rockets. Why, That's why, he calls why, why is it times. illegal? I'll tell you why. You don't rocket okay, your neighbor. You I'll rocket your neighbor. You, I'll, expect I'll consequences. I'll tell you why. Expect the consequences. Then, uh, but that works both ways. Yes. I know, and I Prefer, expect that. Professor, both, Mar the, Professor works Morris, both ways. I'll tell you why. Because every human rights humanitarian and UN organization in the world irrelevant. has said... You know, said you that the blockade them. Nobody cares is, a about form of, is a form of collective punishment, Nobody cares which about is amnesty. illegal under international Forget law. Illegal. The word you, illegal think, is... <laughs> you think a blockade... You which, don't understand okay. the way the world works. Yeah. And, the, these and things are think, irrelevant. And you think confining, because that's the blockade. Yes, you don't Confining, confining a million children... Confining, that's the choice combining, of Hamas. Confining that's Hamas's a million choice. children in what The Economist called okay. a human rubbish the, sheep. The Economist supported he, Israel in this war yeah. and continues okay. to support Israel. What um, International Committee of the Red Cross called a sinking ship, what the UN High Commissioner for Human Rights called a toxic slum, you think- It is a slum, yeah, of course you, it's you, slum. You think- But it's caused under by Under international Hamas. law, you think it's legitimate- Forget to the law. Hey, I know you want to forget the law. What about it's the morality? one thing that forget every is, what about it's what every Israeli fears the most. What? The law. No, as, no, as no. As Sippy Lipney said, <laughs> I studied international law. I oppose international law. Of course you don't want to hear about the law. Then it's got nothing so, to do hey, with anything. Okay, so here's the thing. Yeah. Then don't complain about October 7th. If you don't Did, want to, you hear me if you want to say, I forget about the law. All I said was they then, acted like barbarians. Then there is no international humanitarian law. There's no distinction between civilians and combatants. There, there should be. And so, how be, but it's no, to do now the you're doing what Moeen said. You're becoming very selective about the law. If you want to forget about the law, Hamas had People every right to do what board. it did. It had every right to do what it did, according to you, not to me. Because you want to forget the law. Do you still support the Houthis shooting random ships? Absolutely. Okay, that's a violation of international Absolute, law, so you play the absolutely, same game. Absolutely. And were there a power during World War II who had the courage of the Houthis? Were there a power 
that have that kind so of coverage. Courageous. The, the, to be bombing yeah. merchant ships while oh, tens of thousands oh, of people yeah. die of actual starvation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not yeah. the starvation that exists in the oh, Gaza Strip yeah, where okay. people before October oh, don't I'm, die of starvation. What not, about that, not the concentration camp of the Gaza what Strip. About so star- Houthis, according, what about starvation according, in Yemen? According, don't they have something hey, better to do? that was the Houthis. Yes, I know. Don't that they was have, the Houthis. Don't they have anything better to do? And you know in do? three years they Shouldn't lost 180,000 people? Shouldn't they be feeding the Yemenis? 60,000 Yemenis die of starvation? Why fight the Western powers and Israel when you should be taking care of your problems at home, the Houthis. Often, the only allies of the dispossessed are those who experience similar circumstances. Don't you think that they should take care of the Yemen Yemeni problems? As I'm I very said, happy. I'm very happy they're helping out the Palestinians. Anyone who helps it's at the, the people, expense of and, the Yemenis. Uh, Anybody, anybody who comes to the They're, aid of those suffering a genocide, half of, no whom, genocide, are, half of no whom are children. Yeah, according to the most current UN reports, as no of genocide. today, one quarter of the population of Gaza is starving. That means 500,000 children <laughs> are starving, are on the verge of famine. They keep saying on the verge of. I have not. I have not seen. I have not seen one Palestinian die of starvation in these last four months. Not one. There have been documented cases. They're on the verge. There have been documented cases. I haven't seen it. Yesterday, Al Jazeera said six, and the day before that, they said two. So those are the the two. That number probably dies in Israel of starvation. Also, I I don't think there's famine in Israel. There isn't. There isn't in the Gaza Strip either. It's something which is. Produced for the Western world. There, there, there are infants dying due to a engineered lack of access to food and nutrition. I don't think it's engineered. I think if the Hamas stopped shooting, perhaps. Unfortunately, or, unfortunately, what, unfortunately, as you most, s- said, engineered. I think um, Amnesty, and, excuse me, Human Rights Watch called it using starvation as a weapon. That's called engineering. Okay. That's what they did. But you were pushed on this yeah. by Coleman Hughes to bring yeah. up like an example of why is the Gaza Strip? Like what by what metric are they starving? By what metric is it so behind the rest okay. of the world? You know, if we're going to bring up... Um... Well, I want to hear an answer to that because he didn't answer okay, it. Okay, I'm happy we to kidding. answer it. Yeah. I just quoted you from the humanitarian organizations. They said one quarter of the population of Gaza is now verging on famine. Before October 7th. Okay. Before October I'm not 7th. going before October That's what, You 7th. use that as justification for Hamas fighting. You say the conditions were unlivable. They yeah, had to I, fight. I said to him. So my question is, I, what made it unlivable prior to October 7th? What are the, what are the okay. metrics that you're okay. using? There were about five, six, or seven reports issued by UNCDAD, issued by the World Bank, issued by the International Monetary Fund, and they all said, that's why. That's why. Why did they say why? Okay. Why did they say that's that? That's why The Economist, not a radical periodical, described Gaza as a human rubbish. So tell me he, by what metrics? If there, you're, if you're hey, a historian, if okay, you do all this work, okay, things, here, tell me what they said. Something, don't just, Mr. Don't just Mr. Tell, Mr. tell me by what Mr. metrics. Bunnell. He's not going to answer again. Uh, I, I don't think I've avoided any of your questions, you except, you except when, they question. breached, when they breached a threshold uh-huh. of complete imbecility. So you're about to tell me I've by answered. what metric so, the Gaza Strip okay, is a I'm humanitarian going to answer crisis. You. Okay. you remember what I said a moment ago? I said to Professor Morris, I defer to expertise. I look at what the organizations say. I look at what the United Nations High Commissioner Just for say Human Rights said. you don't know. You don't know I, I or you don't, don't care. Okay, I don't that's know. Fine. Do you know how that. complicated... Have you ever investigated how complicated is the metric for hunger, starvation, and famine? It is such a complicated a metric they figured out. If you asked me to repeat it now, I couldn't do it. And yet we have I a def- human development I, index I, where we rank countries, yeah, yet okay. we can still measure okay. infant mortality, Go life Go expectancy. The hum- Yeah, we can measure all of these yeah. things. Yeah. Yeah. Maureen, I'm holding out for you here. You still didn't answer the hope question. What gives you a source of hope about the region? Well, uh, first of all, I would agree with Benny Morris and and Norman Finkelstein um, that the current situation is bleak. And I think it would be um, unreasonable to expect it to not get even bleaker uh, in the coming weeks and months. And we now, this conflict really, it originated in the late 19th century. It's been um, uh, been a more or less active conflict since the 1920s, 1930s, um, and it has produced a tremendous amount of of, of suffering and, and and regional conflict and geopolitical complications and all of that. Uh, but what gives me hope is that throughout their entire ordeal, 
um, the Palestinian people have never surrendered. Um, and I believe they never will surrender to overwhelming force and violence. They have taken everything that Israel has thrown at them. They have taken everything that the West has thrown at them. They have taken everything that those who are supposed to be their natural allies have um, uh, on occasion uh, thrown at them. But um, this is a people that never has, and I believe never will surrender. And um, at a certain point, I think um, Israel uh, and its leaders um, will have to come to the realization that by hook or by crook, um, these people are going to achieve their inalienable and legitimate um, uh, national rights, and and that that is going to be a reality. I, I um, as I well, was. What do you mean by that? You mean all of Palestine? Is that what you mean? No, and and from the river to the sea. Well, ideally, of course, yes. Um, and and what Those I was those inalienable rights. No, what I was saying earlier, and then the discussion got sidetracked, is um, that I did believe that a two-state settlement, um, a partition of Palestine um, along the 1967 uh, boundaries, um, would have been a reasonable um, solution because I think it also would have opened pathways to um, further- But now you believe what? Further nonviolent engagement between Israel and the Palestinians that could create um, other forms of coexistence in a, in a federal or binational or, or What do you other... think about refugees in regards to that? Do you think there has to be a resettlement of the five or six million, whoever wants to lay claim to be I, 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 I think I think there has to be an explicit acknowledgement um, of uh, responsibility. Of, of, of the responsibility and and the return and of the rights, I think that in the framework of a two-state settlement, I think a formula would need to be found that does not undermine um, uh, the foundations um, uh, of a two-state settlement, and I don't think it would be that difficult because I suspect that there are probably large numbers of um, Palestinian refugees who, once their rights are acknowledged, will find it um, exceptionally but, but, distasteful, but Canada, Canada. Uh, exceptionally distasteful um, to have to live among the kind of sentiments that we've heard around this table um, today, to be quite frank. I mean, I heard, I, you know, I'm, I was previously unfamiliar with you, um, and I watched one of your preparation videos uh, very disconcerting stuff, I have to say. You were explaining two days ago in the discussion about apartheid and how absurd it was that, in your view, Jim Crow was not apartheid. Jim Crow was not apartheid. But Arab states not giving citizenship to Palestinian refugees is apartheid. My that's position, what I meant sure. with my, my earlier position, comment that's about that's white great. supremacy. So my issue, that's great, the white supremacy comment. And if I, so I, I, my, I, well, hold on, well, let, me, let me respond, okay? My issue is that I feel like we have jumped on this euphemistic treadmill, and I think that's part of the reason why this conflict will never get solved, is because on one end, you've got a people who are now convinced internationally that they're victims of apartheid, genocide, concentration camp conditions, uh, ethnic cleansing, uh, they're forced to live in an open air prison um, with all of these things that are stacked against them, all of these terms that are highly specific, that refer to, to very precise things. Uh, and then when people well, like you said that they should- I nothing less from someone who doesn't think Jim Crow is apartheid. I don't know if Jim- But who does think that there are states The problem is you're morally housing. loading. For you, apartheid is when racists do bad things. No, right? no, there's the, a, the, there's the a specific, definition of apartheid. That's, that's great. But there's the, a very the clear specific top-down racial domination enacted through top-down like federal legislative policies or whatever means that I don't know if um, I don't know if Jim Crow would have qualified for apartheid. That doesn't make it any less. Excuse me, Twinklestein. I'm talking right now. Excuse me, excuse me, Twinklestein. I'm talking to your friend over here. Um, I don't know if it would have qualified as the crime of apartheid. Just like if Israel were to literally nuke the Gaza Strip and kill two million people, I don't know if that would qualify for the crime of in genocide. In your eyes, probably not. I don't. Well, mm. yeah, but because genocide requires a special intent. I think the issue yeah. is and, 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 instead of. And I think this conversation is actually is emblematic of the entire conversation. I don't good, think anything. Then let me finish I don't think, answering. Well, Benny sure, but Morris's you accuse me of supporting racism. So yeah. Well, I, I you think did, the, the, and I you did are. It. I did it. Do you think I support Jim Crow laws? 
Look, when the fact that you can't even answer that honestly, it doesn't matter what say that 800 civilians were killed by by Hamas. You said, well, maybe 400 were killed by Israel. I don't know the number. Maybe you said you said 400. No, I didn't. You co-signed the opinion. No, I didn't. No, I didn't. Oh, well, wait. How many? What do you? I think the word was some. That's what I heard. No, well, you weren't listening. How many people do you think approximately? If you had to ball, if you had to ballpark it, how many do you think were killed by Hamas on October 7th? I think it's pretty clear that the majority of civilians that That's were killed. 51% or 90%? Don't ask me to put a number I just want on a ballpark. something Those are two I don't very know. Different First of all, are you when you say Hamas, do you mean Palestinians or do you mean Hamas specifically? I mean the specifically? invading Palestinian force. I don't well, like to say Palestinians because I don't think all Palestinian civilians were involved. No. In I'll say Hamas, Islamic you Jihad, mean, whatever, al whatever other But that's people. how this discussion started. You said Hamas and I began to answer that. And then Benny Morris said, actually, he means Hamas in addition to Jihad and the others. So, so of the invading Palestinian force, how many do you think killed civilians versus the IDF? What do you think of the ballpark, the percentage? Well, the figures we have are that about a third of the casualties on October 7th were military. That's and not about what two I third were. What's your question? How many, what percentage thirds? of civilians do you think were the killed by the invading force? I, I think I think a clear majority, but I can't you, give you a specific yeah. figure. If you thought it was closer to 51% or 99% why were killed he, by- Why would how, he how, know that? How would he know because that? Because it's interesting no, to actually stake I, out a position. I, I, yeah, it's interesting. If you want to be completely, they, totally agnostic they, on they, it, that's fine. complete ignorance because we don't know Professor Morris doesn't know. Muin Rabani doesn't know. And yet you can know. speak with absolute complete... certainty that the IDF is targeting and murdering Palestinian I... children intentionally. Oh, actually, you see the double standard? No, I don't. You see? I know you don't. I know. It was a rhetorical question. See. Obviously, you, know you don't. You know why? <laughs> Because, because I, looked at, the I looked at the UN report. Uh -huh. I looked at the, the Goldstone UN, report. No, the UN report on the Great March of Return in 2018, and they said that the snipers were targeting children, medics, journalists, and disabled people. Just as we they are now in this conflict. Exactly. No, uh, more journalists have been killed in the last several months in Gaza. Than in any other conflict. Do you conflict. acknowledge and that in Hamas? Let me, do you acknowledge, do you acknowledge that in that all Hamas, of World War II? Hamas is, is not yeah, killing you, journalists. You, in does, the Gaza do you strip. agree that they More, operate in civilian uniforms? That their goal is to induce that confusion? That that's the that the way that they conduct themselves militarily? No, let me finish my point. More journalists. I understand. Have, have been I, more you want children. I, in the, he doesn't want to hear it. So no, because it's virtue signaling. You're not having a material, a substantial. It is virtue signaling. Yeah. Yes, like when you say children over and over again. That's virtue signaling. But talking about you have this. You have this. How many Israelis were killed? That's not virtue signaling, because that's human life. I don't care about. I don't care if you a hundred are killed or a thousand. You just I'm interrogated him. Fifty-one percent. I'm curious who you're assigning the question. And then, yes, and then that, that's not the number. Then, that's the responsibility and Muin, norm. And then Moeen mentions that more journalists were killed in Gaza than in all of World War II. That doesn't get it. That doesn't and, further any and part of the more medics were killed. No, no, that's, in Gaza. So that's silly. And, and then Journalists, he says it's virtual <laughs> the, in the area. But when Israelis get killed, that's serious. I well, never said it's serious yeah, on both but, sides. But, yeah, yeah, I didn't say it's virtual signaling. No, 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 I'm not virtual, virtual signaling. signaling. I'm asking a substantive question of who do you yeah. assign blame to, or do you play into Norm Finkelstein's conspiracies think, that the ambulances conspiracy. should have known immediately who was dead, that the numbers were changed because uh, they were Mr. fake, Burrell, or that maybe 51% of the Mr. people Burrell, were killed look, by uh, by Hamas and, and Islamic Jihad, but 29% were killed by IDF helicopters. You asked me a direct question, and you got a direct answer. I didn't. I got majority, which could be anywhere from 51 to 9 a clear majority. What percent is a clear majority? As opposed it's always, to majority. they live in a clear ambiguity, majority, in my view, is well over fifty percent. Please don't ask me to be more precise, you because could, I you, you know, could say 80, 90, 95. You know, I don't. If I knew that, I would say it. I think it's a reasonable. It's a reasonable. Sorry. Perhaps it is, but I. You're not the best person to be asking that question. You know, I read when you wrote op described Operation Defensive Shield. And you said a few dozen homes were destroyed. You're talking about what happened in the Jenin yeah, refugee right. camp. And you said... No, the you Arabs said, said 500. You, you said guys said 500 you said Palestinians few, were killed in no, Jenin. No, no, I never said and that. Then no, the, no, no, no but that. that was the statement uh, of the PLO, the, the Palestinian, Palestinian you, Authority. You said a few dozen homes... And that there were massacres there. There were a few dozen homes... Yes, a few dozen homes. Yeah, well, it turned out 140 buildings were destroyed. 5,000 people... 5,000 people were left homeless. How many you were killed? 5,000. How many You described killed? it. No, I'm talking about homes destroyed. So you're not the best person to be criticizing what Muin says when he says clear majority, but he can't say more. You know why he can't say more? He doesn't know. I, 
He doesn't know. Yeah, yeah, I understand that. I, I hold that's a historical. If, if, I, I, if I was trying that. to belittle, I would give you a very different answer. I would just say, I don't know. The, I do the, know the that right some phrase, were You know what the right phrase there would be? The overwhelming majority were killed by Arab gunmen. And very small number were killed by Israelis by accident or whatever. You're not that's probably as a historian, true. No. That's probably that, true. That, that maybe the, that. I, I can I can state with confidence a clear majority, overwhelming majority. You may be correct, but I can't state that with certainty. I think there's a very easy way to find out is to have a independent. Forget independent. I know exactly. you know, well, of course you forget, forget independent. Forget the law. Forget, that doesn't mean forget the law. Independent is you and high commission forget for, independent for human rights. No, not necessarily. Just repeat They're the They're all, all just from repeat barbaric these really, countries. You know, you know, a Syrian was the head of the UN Commission for Human Rights. But if it wasn't Olympian, Israeli, it would have been okay. Uh, he certainly would have been more honest yeah. than oh, a Syrian. Of course. Oh, yeah, of course. For, from your perspective. Yeah.